So I've run into this problem a number of times where I use drag and drop interactions in exactly the same way I might use a multiple choice knowledge check slide or even a final quiz question. And of course, it doesn't take very long for most stakeholders to realize that the normal way you would interact with a question slide is different than how you interact with a drag and drop. So here's my solution for getting a drag and drop to behave more like a regular question slide. I did a version of this video uh, back when Adobe Captivate uh, 8 was released, but I figured now it's been about three years since then. And uh, with Captivate 2017 release out, I thought I would uh, update that video for today's software. So let's get started here. So I have some knowledge at the beginning of my course where you're learning something, uh, in this case, about a bunch of geometric uh, shapes here. I've set up what will become my drag and drop slide. And then, of course, I have the rest of the project if users are successful in matching the appropriate uh, answers with the correct drop target. So let's start building a drag and drop here. Very simple, very straightforward. You go to the interaction drop down icon, click on drag and drop. Very simple three-step process. You can just ignore the extra items you're seeing on this page here. I've already got some stuff that I'll be using later in this tutorial. But we want to identify our drag sources. I like to just draw a whole selection box around them. Click next and we'll drag a selection box around our drop targets. Uh, you'll notice the submit button has uh, appeared. And when I hit next, we'll get a failure and um, success caption once I start matching these guys up here. Um, and we'll just match those shapes up and then hit finish. And we're back to the regular Adobe Captivate interface. So let me just drag these uh, success and failure captions and talk a little bit about how the normal drag and drop interaction works. Uh, a normal drag and drop automatically pauses at 1.5 seconds is the default, but you can change that, of course. And you can uh, you're usually just provide it with one uh, attempt, and uh, then it locks the slide and displays either a success caption or a failure caption for a predetermined amount of time. You can change that in your timing panel. So I can select my failure caption here. And you can see that it's displaying for three seconds. Same thing with the success caption. You can adjust that, of course, depending on if the message is longer and you want to give users more time to read that, uh, that feedback. But uh, in this case here, actually, we're going to get rid of the success message. I am going to just change the failure to say something very simple. I'll just say incorrect. And I think I'm going to place it up at the top here and we'll just center it. And we'll go to the drag and drop panel and get rid of that success caption because we're going to do our own sort of success and failure captions. That'll also include the click anywhere to continue uh, or click anywhere to do remediation as well. So this should work pretty much as is. There's some things I like to do with my drag and drops just to make them behave a little bit differently. I like to select all my draggable items, go to the drag and drop panel under the format tab and apply a zoom in effect. And what this does is it gives you an effect that the object is being lifted off the page before it's dragged over. So I find that kind of effective. Uh, although it wouldn't apply in this case here because of the geometric shapes, a lot of times I'll choose a, a different snap behavior or anchor position Often it'll be just like the bottom right hand corner, uh, but I'll leave that up to you. And you could apply effects here as well, but I typically don't apply effects to the drop target, but you could choose to have a zoom in effect. Um, but again, I don't really use that myself. Uh, the other thing I like to do is uh, give them more than one attempt, especially if it's a knowledge check. You're just you're just checking to see if they've um, they've figured out the skill or knowledge. Uh, that they should be learning. So maybe two or three attempts are fine. Um, and of course, I also like to reset the interaction after each attempt. 
Uh, it's important to note that your pause for a drag and drop interaction is defaulted to 1.5 seconds. You could make it longer if you wish, uh, but it's important that you know whatever that amount actually is. Under the Options tab, you also can uh, re-drag the drop source. I find this useful if, for example, the user was dragging the star and accidentally dropped it on the triangle, even though they meant to put it on the drop target star. Um, it's nice to be able to give them the ability to move that over to the star before they say they hit submit to find out that it's wrong anyway. So what I do in this case is rather than this incorrect really is sort of a try again message. And instead I've got a grouped object that I'm going to create for both the success caption and the failure caption. Let's start with the success caption. So we have a very simple message here. Um, we could just say correct, click anywhere or press Y to continue. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a very large smart shape that we're going to use as a button. In fact, it's going to be so large, it's going to actually be covering the entire slide once it's made visible. Uh, so what we're going to do is, first of all, use this as a button. The action will be to go to the next slide. We are going to select a hand cursor and disable the click sound, which I'm just not a fan of. And in this case here, uh, it has multi-state objects by default, simply because I've um, turned a smart shape into a button. So I want to delete that rollover effect. I won't need it. And I'll delete the down effect as well. So now let's group these two objects together. I can select both of them and simply hit Control G or Command G on my keyboard. And what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, select just the button. And I'm going to shrink down my, my, my edit stage here and just make sure that this covers the whole slide. That's why I put an outline around it so I can clearly see it as necessary here. So that looks pretty good. I'll just center that, make sure it's centered on the page. And I'll do the same thing with the correct caption itself. That will be centered on the page. And let's give this grouped object a name. It's going to, it's defaulted to group underscore one. I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it correct group. And its default state will not be visible in output. And I'm actually going to hide it on my timeline as well because I don't want it to interfere with any additional work I need to do. Um, oh, but before I make it go away completely, let's make sure I've got that shortcut key to press Y to continue to work. So uh, with just that particular shape selected under Actions, we'll just put a uh, select the radio button for shortcut and we'll just type in the letter Y. So that will work here. So let's again hide this on the timeline. And I'm going to do the same here. So uh, first thing I can do is I can center this click anywhere to review the, the lesson. And in this case here, this I'm going to use as a button. Just like before. But in this case, the action will be to jump to slide one. Uh, in other words, it'll be sort of a remediation. I'll do the same little niceties as before. And we're going to also want to get rid of those rollover and down states. We're not going to need those. And again, it's not, uh, not going to be visible. Well, let's group it together first with the caption here. And the group will be not visible in output. And we'll call this incorrect group. And let's just resize the button portion of this to cover the entire slide. 
And like before, we're also going to add that shortcut key, although the message uh, will be a shortcut key and press the letter R, which can stand for review or remediation or whatever you wish there. So that will work out well, and that should give us what we need. So I'm going to also make that not visible on the stage. Uh, make sure that it's not visible in output. I'm going to just double check the other one too. Yep. Uh, so let's just hide both of those. So under the actions of our drag and drop, rather than to continue on success, we're going to show the correct group. Um, even though there is a pause on that button, I'm going to uncheck continue playing the project. So I just want to pause and we're going to wait for the user to click that button. And on failure, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to show, in this case here, the incorrect group. And also uncheck continue playing the project. And that pretty much is going to do what we need to do. There's one other step that we need to take. And that's uh, on the on enter action for this particular slide. Uh, because this is a remediation, um, users will be coming back to this slide to make a, an, an additional attempt. So we want to reset the slide back to normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute a short little advanced action, which we're going to write now. And this is going to be called reset slide two. And we'll just say hide our incorrect group and hide our correct group. We'll save that as an action. Click OK. Hit close and make sure that's set up to, uh, to view there. So let's try this out. We'll just do a preview in HTML5. So here's some knowledge we're imparting on the user. We'll go forward. We'll try and do this right, but unfortunately we will not succeed. We'll get a few attempts at this. And once we've exhausted those attempts, we'll get that failure message. We can click anywhere to review this lesson. So we go back to slide one. And of course now we're here and we've learned it properly this time and we can match up all of our stuff and then click anywhere to continue with the rest of the project if you thought this video was useful please share it with your colleagues if you need help with your next e-learning project consider hiring me my focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com Follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.